We don't usually cover the regular, unusual anomalies found by the countless amateur UFO investigators out there who are tirelessly combing the terrain in and around our neighboring planets, moons and asteroids in a search for possible alien craft, artificial structures or even ancient ruins. Although some of these formations can indeed be intriguing, they're often easily disregarded as mere natural formations. However, our next anomaly, we believe, could be seen as a considerable mystery. Since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa has completed several interplanetary flybys, traveling a total of 2 billion kilometers to arrive at an asteroid known as Itakawa, or more precisely, 25143 Itakawa, on September 12, 2005, successfully carrying out numerous scientific observations of the asteroid since then. However, what is astonishing regarding this new research is what has been found within these new images taken of our space-traveling neighbor. It seems, during its enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it's picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris, this mysterious object, now perched or possibly impaled upon the front of the asteroid, looks for all the world like an artificial satellite. A huge, perfectly spherical object with three clearly distinct yet not too damaged legs or more likely receiver antenna protruding from the area which impacted the asteroid. It's resting upon the so-called Woomera Desert District of the Space Rock and was clearly not there the last time it was photographed. Could this object possibly be a satellite from an alien planet? Maybe still active? Did the asteroid have an extremely close call with a possible alien neighbor, avoiding an impact we would have never learnt of? Itakawa is a Mars crosser asteroid, and interestingly, it was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission by a space-going nation, and is still the smallest asteroid ever photographed. It was discovered in 1998 by the Linear Project, and was given the provisional designation 1998 SF-36. However, in August 2003, it was officially named after Hideo Itokawa, a Japanese rocket scientist. Maybe Hideo spotted something. The object it now carries is clearly not of normal formation. Not only does it not look natural, but displays a symmetrical design similar to those found within our own artificial objects, such as satellites. And due to this object being caught floating through space, just like our own satellites do, it's undoubtedly a very compelling anomalous object. Was this small asteroid chosen for the first major exploratory program above all other asteroids because the Japanese knew something we didn't? Just what could this object be? We just hope they explore it further and whatever they discover, they share it with the world. Less 1 and 2, the Lincoln Experimental Satellite 1 and 2 were essentially identical experimental communication satellites. LESS-1, launched from Cape Canaveral on 11th February 1965, it accomplished only a few of its objectives. Apparently because of miswiring of the ordnance circuitry, the satellite never left circular orbit and ceased transmitting in 1967. LESS-2, the twin of LESS-1 fared much better. It achieved its planned final orbit on 6th May 1965. However, less one the American satellite, abandoned in 1967 as a piece of space junk, has mysteriously began transmitting signals. An amateur radio astronomer in North Cornwall accidentally picked up the signal and, after cross checking with various lists, has identified it was less one built by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and launched in 1965 and has been drifting out of control ever since. Phil Williams from Nearview noticed its peculiar signal and suspects it's caused by a tumbling end over end. He believes every four seconds the solar panels become shouted by the engine. It gives off a signal, a particularly ghostly sound as the voltage from the solar panels fluctuates, Phil says. It is likely that the onboard batteries have now disintegrated and something has caused the transmitter on 237 MHz, believed for decades to have been dead and lost to the vast emptiness of space, to mysteriously start up again. Phil says it's remarkable to think that electronics built nearly 50 years ago, 12 years before Voyager 1, and long before microprocessors and integrated circuits, is still capable of working in the hostile environs of space. What do you think of the less's mysterious signal? Has it been hijacked by aliens attempting to make contact? Let us know in the comments.
thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Undoubtedly, one of the most spectacular and beautiful planets of our solar system, Saturn. Although other planets, such as Jupiter, also own a ring, they are too faint to see without powerful orbital telescopes. An earthly, physics-defying polar storm, spotted by Voyager in 1981, had winds swirling in a hexagonal shape. This most peculiar of storms was confirmed by the infamous flyby by Cassini in 2006. However, Saturn's rings are not just made up of mountainous-sized blocks of perfectly pure ice. Intriguingly, there does indeed exist claims by ex-NASA employees of objects of extraterrestrial origins and or interest locked within the orbit of this gigantic planetary orbital ring. With some going further with, which what others claim are tin pot theories that said objects are, in fact, sending our planet peculiar radio signals. We find Saturn, and indeed the secrets it may be hiding, especially within its spectacular ring, highly compelling. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there?
China's U-22 rover, currently exploring the surface of our moon, has exposed an intriguing discovery, a mysterious object that many are labeling the hut. It is a cube-shaped curiosity, which oddly just appears to be resting upon the moon, as if once placed. In previous videos, we have examined similar anomalies many believe to be obelisks. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track if there's something very important to be developed from the moon. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? With even Buzz Aldrin himself claiming there to be a monolith on Phobos, one of Mars' moons. And there is indeed a mysterious object resting on the surface of this mysterious satellite. A moon which not only appears to be hollow from one side, but is on a decaying orbit which does not make sense, almost as if it were a ghost of the past. Earthly calculations revealing that the moon should have disintegrated into Mars long ago. Yet the moon still exists, along with its mysterious so-called monolith. Yet I digress. The thing that makes these objects so interesting is how they seemingly appear to have once been placed where they have rested for untold millennia. No contact trail, no debris, dust plume, or disturbance at all. And most importantly, no crater of any form. Unfortunately, however, according to Chinese space officials, it may be a long time before the rover reaches the object, if at all. One major reason is that U-22 isn't active most of the time. The solar-powered spacecraft cannot operate during the 14-and-a-half Earth day-long lunar night, nor for roughly 24 hours after sunrise and before sunset. U-22 also stays offline during lunar noon, as temperatures at that time can reach 127 degrees Celsius. What is this object? Further photographic study and detailed research into its precise location needs to be undertaken. It is an object which we find highly compelling. <laughs>